Hey STAT students, how you doing? Today's video is on simulations. Now, what's a simulation? Well, if I simulate something, what that means is I'm, uh, I'm making a model of it. I'm kind of pretending to do it, but I'm not really doing it. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm mimicking it. Um, but we're in statistics, okay? So why, you, why use a simulation in statistics? In statistics, you would, you would uh, use a, a simulation to estimate a probability, to estimate the mean of a particular uh, population, to estimate a particular count. Um, now, why don't we actually just find out what it is? Well, there are several reasons for doing that. One, uh, maybe uh, we don't want to use actual data, or, or it's just too difficult to collect actual data. Uh, another reason might be uh, we can't or we really don't want to uh, uh, calculate the answer mathematically. Sometimes you could answer a question mathematically, but it's really, really hard and I'm not totally confident. And um, it's actually pretty easy just to write up a little program uh, in Excel, for example, and simulate what the probability is that way. Um, and the good thing about using spreadsheets is you can do a simulation where you run about you know, a million trials or, or 100,000 trials. Uh, and, uh, and the thing that you've got to know about simulations, or the thing that is most important about simulations, is that they use randomness, okay? If randomness is not a part of your simulation, you're not doing it right. All right, so um, in real life, um, when we're doing a simulation, what we generally do is we use a random number generator, we use a computer, uh, we use a calculator, some way of, uh, of randomly, randomly generating numbers, okay? Uh, now, that's in real life. In school, however, what we generally do is we, uh, we use random number tables, okay? And you might be thinking, what? What is a random number table? Well, it looks kind of like that, okay? It's a piece of paper with a whole bunch of digits on it. And you might say, well, those aren't random. They're, they're printed right there. Yeah, well, they're random to you. Okay, you didn't know what was on this uh, what was on this piece of paper before you got it, so you're looking at it there and you're oh, okay, fine. And also, they were randomly generated. Okay, so you can have approximately ten percent of those digits is going to be the number six. Approximately ten is going to be the number eight. A uh, ten percent is going to be the number eight, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so how exactly we use those? I'll show you in a second. So I guess the best way to show this is to just jump right into an example. Let's say I have a box of chocolates. I have a box of assorted chocolates. There are eight chocolates in the box, two with raspberry filling, two with caramel filling, two with coconut filling, and two with pure chocolate filling. From the outside, all of the chocolates look exactly the same. They look perfectly identical, so there's no way of knowing which is which. In addition, I'm a very picky eater. I love caramel, I love chocolate, I love coconut, but I can't stand the raspberry filling. So my question is, how long will it take me to pick one of those horrible raspberry chocolates, okay? How many chocolates can I pick up and enjoy until ah, I get that kind that I just can't stand? Well, um, I guess what I could do is, I could just buy a whole bunch of chocolates and I could run the experiment over and over and over. And uh, that, would, uh, that would not be a good idea, okay? I'd get sick, I'd spend a lot of money, and I probably wouldn't even be able to run the experiment very many times, okay? So that's not a good idea. This is the perfect time to use a simulation, okay? So what are the steps? Number one, you identify the event that gets repeated. Okay, whenever you're doing a simulation, you're going to do something over and over and over and over. What's getting repeated this time? Well, my eating one of the chocolates. I pick up a chocolate, I go, ooh, and I eat it. Okay? That's what gets repeated every single time. Second step, explain how you're going to model this. And what I mean is, okay, we have these digits, right? We have all these random digits, and so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use random numbers, and I'm going to assign those random numbers to different outcomes. Okay, so one through six. Now, whether I get a chocolate filling or a caramel filling or a, a, a coconut filling, I don't really care. Okay, those are all just fine. So I'm just going to call those non-raspberry. Okay, so one through six is going to be non-raspberry. Seven and eight is going to be raspberry. I've also got these other digits, nine and zero. What do I do with them? Blow them off. 
Ignore them, okay? Every time I come to a nine or a zero, I'll just ignore it and I'll move on to the next digit, okay? So that's how I'm going to assign my digits. I'm also, I'm also going to ignore any repeated numbers because in this particular case, once I select, I'm selecting without replacement, okay? I'm not a little kid. I don't take a bite of this and then put it back, okay? I take responsibility for the chocolates that I pick. So uh, um, I cannot eat the same type of chocolate twice. So what that means is, as I'm going through my random number table, if I see a four, and then there's a four right after it, I have to ignore that because, like I just said, I can't eat the same chocolate twice. All right? Uh, now, explain how you're going to simulate the trial. Okay? And what that means is, uh, how, when do you stop? Okay? You're going you're to look at all these numbers, which it simulates my eating the chocolates. Well, at what point do I stop that particular trial? Well, at the point when I get a raspberry one. So each trial will simulate my eating a chocolate. I will stop when I get to a raspberry-filled chocolate, okay? And uh, let's see, which, uh, um, I believe that was seven and, was it seven and eight? Uh, were the digits that, I, that were assigned to raspberry. So every time I see one of those digits, I would stop my, uh, uh, my simulation, okay? Or stop that particular trial of the simulation. Uh, step four. What is the response variable? What, what is it that I'm, that I'm measuring here, okay? In this particular case, the response variable is gonna be the number of chocolates that I consume, okay? Including that nasty raspberry one, all right? Step five, do it again, and then again, and then again, and then again, lots of times, okay? The more you do it, the more, uh, uh, the more robust your, uh, uh, your results, okay? Uh, so, <clears throat> there's our, uh, um, our random number table, and so let's see. Uh, if you remember, okay, yes, uh, it was seven and eight that were the raspberry fillings. So the first one, that's a non-raspberry one. Second one, raspberry. Okay, so that particular time, it took me two candies, two chocolates. Okay, that I ignore. Remember, I'm ignoring nine and zero. Six is a non-raspberry. Seven, uh, two is a non-raspberry. Eight is a raspberry. So that time, it took me three chocolates. Okay, and Okay, I, this, is, this is nice because uh, otherwise I would have had to have bought two cho boxes of chocolates by then and this is much easier. Okay, that time, dang, got a raspberry the first time. Uh, this time it took me two uh, candies and then uh, uh, this time I ignore the nine, I get two non-raspberries and then I get a raspberry and so on and so on and so on. And you keep on going down here. And each time we do one of these, that's the, this is another trial in my simulation. Okay? So now I've repeated that many times. And so now it's time to analyze my response variable. Okay? So, well, I got two, then three, and then one, then two, then three. So I'm going to write all these down. Two, then three, then one, then two, then three, etc., etc., etc. And uh, let's take the average of those. And the average that I get is... 2.9, okay? What does that tell me? Well, the very, the very last step in this is a very important step, and that is state the conclusion, okay? State the conclusion in non-jargon uh, uh, language, okay? State it in English. And what that says is, based on the simulation, I estimate that it will take me an average of 2.9 chocolates to get one with the horrible raspberry filling. There you go, okay? Now, uh, disclaimer, in real life, I love raspberry, okay? In real life, I'll eat any of those chocolates. You dip anything in chocolate and I'll eat it. It's good stuff, okay? But uh, that's, that, that's just, I just want to make sure I don't irritate some, you know, somebody who has a raspberry farm. Uh, now, what can, uh, uh, well, let me get to the next uh, slide here. Steps to the simulation. This is what we just did. First, you figure out what are you repeating over and over and over. Two, uh, tell me, how many digits are you choosing? Here we just chose one digit by one digit by one digit by one digit. Sometimes you'd want to take two by two by two by two, three by three by three by three, like that, okay? Depending on what, the, what it is you're modeling. Um, this is also where you figure out how you're going to assign your digits, whether the digits can be repeated or not, uh, if there are any digits you're, you're going to ignore or not, okay? Three, this is explain how you're going to simulate each trial, and in particular, what is the stopping point? At what point do I stop that particular trial and you know, tally up, count up, or determine whether it 
met the criterion or not. Uh, four, what is the response variable? What are you estimating? You're almost always going to be estimating a proportion of something, or you're going to be estimating an average of something. Those are the, really the things that we use simulations for the most. Um, step five, do it again, then do it again, then do it again, then do it again. Step six, analyze that response variable. Okay, look at it, take the, take the average, take the, uh, uh, the, the proportion, whatever it is that you're measuring. And then finally, state that conclusion in the context of the problem. A couple of things you want to look for. <clears throat> uh, be careful when you assign the random numbers to the outcomes, okay? Make sure that you're using appropriate probabilities. For example, this time, if I had said, well, it can either be uh, raspberry or not raspberry, I'll make all the even numbers raspberry and all the odd numbers not raspberry. Well, that's bad assigning of digits, because now I just gave it a 50-50 chance of getting the raspberry. That's not how it is, OK? It's, there were lots more non-raspberry than raspberry fillings there. So make sure you use appropriate probabilities. Uh, remember that if choosing your digits one by one, if that doesn't work, you can choose two by two or more. Uh, uh, also, be careful when you determine whether a number can be repeated or not. Think about it. Are you choosing with replacement or without replacement? Uh, and then, then number three, please state your conclusion uh, in the context. Okay. Make sure you're actually answering the question that was asked. A lot of times we get really involved in these uh, problems and we kind of forget what we're doing there. Okay. All right. That's. Uh, that's, that's what we have about simulations. I know that's just one quick little, uh, little example there, but I hope it gives you an idea of uh, what you're doing. All right, thank you, bye-bye.